I've wanted to do this for so long and I'm so excited. I've even got, you know, orange on my eyes for the Dutch. It's gonna be amazing. Let's go! Hey guys, it's model making time and today we're doing the Fokka D21 or DXXI as you'll see it written down most of the time. The model we're actually doing today is produced by Frog and I bought it part of Multipack. It was just how it came cheap on eBay. <laughs> I also bought some decals because mine came with the Finnish decals and I really wanted to do the Dutch one with, you know, the orange triangles which it's famous for so, you know, We've got them as well. For those of you who are new here, hi, hello, and for those of you returning, don't you, you look good today. So we're going to go through the history of the Fokker DXXI itself, so just the general aviation history. We'll also go through the aircraft in gaming, and then we'll go through the history of the model kit before finally we'll move on to me assembling, painting, and making this model look fabulous. Don't want to watch a particular section? I got you covered. Just use the timestamps, or chapters as they're sometimes referred to on YouTube, to just get to which parts you want to watch. I won't be offended. This aircraft is actually already featured in two of my videos. It featured in my Fokker Mark Trainer video, where I built the Fokker Mark Trainer in 172nd, my first ever resin kit. And it also featured in my ultimate paint test video, where I basically tested all the main model brands of paint, or at least as many as I reasonably could do. <laughs> Obviously we'll discuss the paints as part of this video, but I strongly recommend watching that as well. Well, let's dive in. The history of the Fokker DXXI. D21. Now, while we're jumping into the history of Fokker, Fokker was entering its golden era. After its successful biplanes, monoplanes, and triplanes of World War One, Fokker had relocated back to the Netherlands, its home. Successful aircraft had already been produced in this era, such as the Fokker FVII or the Fokker 7 transport aircraft, which was used as an airliner, more commonly referred to as the Fokker Trimotor. Fokker was renowned for pushing forward aviation and the modernity, so it was unsurprising that they were successful in this period. In fact, for many, it's viewed that if, you know, the invasion of the Netherlands hadn't have happened, Fokker would potentially still be a leader in world aviation. Now, in 1934, the Luftfahrtsdeling, which was the Dutch Army Aviation Group, the predecessor to the Royal Netherlands Air Force, would receive proposals for a new fighter from Fokker. This aircraft would again be more modern, and I guess now when you look at it, it's a kind of typical design for the 1930s. A low monoplane aircraft with fully enclosed cockpit, but still featuring fixed undercarriage. That's something we'll touch on a bit later. A contract was signed in 1935 for a prototype to be produced and evaluated by the Royal Netherlands East Indies Army. At the time of its first flights, on the 27th of March 1936, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs had changed its pact in aviation doctrine. No longer were we looking at mass fighters, but we were looking at accruing a large number of bombers. Funnily enough, Fokker also produced those in the Fokker TV. But it did put some strain on this, you know, aircraft. Another strain on Fokker's development would be the direct competitor that Colhaven had produced, the FK-58. Overall, a more modern design featuring retractable undercarriage to boot. It was decided that both should compete in trials and evaluations um, in 1936. It's reasonable to assume trials would have, you know, lasted quite some time. However, Fokker had a bit of luck in the fact that Coolhaven was not ready for that aircraft to be flown until September of 1938, or at least up to specification. Due to its initial evaluations in 1936, though, Finland had become interested in becoming an operator of the type. This had led to a revival of interest in the type for the Luftfahrtsdeling as well. So, an order of 36 was procured and delivered by the 8th of September 1939. As we mentioned, Finland was really interested in the aircraft and ended up producing 93 of the aircraft domestically between 1939 and 1944, becoming perhaps the most famous user of the aircraft. Modifications were made by Finland during production and experiments, such as retractable undercarriage, which is something Fokker had actually considered prior, but the Dutch government saw it as costly and potentially not beneficial. Oh, how wrong they would be. My understanding is that for Finland, it was essentially a case that adapting an aircraft to have retractable undercarriage was not really beneficial, so it ultimately became, you know, non-fruitful. As a result of Finland's unique political position at the time as well, they had to use an alternative power plant. Instead of using the Bristol Mercury 8, they had to use a Pratt & Whitney R1535 Twin Wasp Junior engine. That was supplied by Sweden, of course. The Danish had also ordered the tie, wanting to do domestic production as well, but 
By the time Germany had invaded in 1940, only 10 of the type had been produced. Interestingly, the Spanish Republican Air Force used it during the Civil War, and when I say used, I mean they produced it, and apparently one escaped, but it's really not clear whether or not that is sort of a folk tale, or if it genuinely did escape. I think there are people passionate on both sides of that, but it's an interesting case nevertheless. Of course it was used by the Netherlands in the German invasion, and in their first fight they had to escort a flight of Fokker TB bombers, and six of the D-21s would be present. In the end, one BF-109 was shot down and two were damaged, however, one DXXI and two TBs were lost, so make that what you will. On the same day though, they did have another engagement where a flight of D-21s down to 37 out of 55 Junkers Ju-52 transport aircraft. Obviously Finland used this very fiercely during the course of the war, and when I say war I mean both the winter and continuation war. It was one of the most important parts of Finnish aviation inventory, and many aces were born either on the Fokker or had at some point flown the Fokker D-21. They became a bit of a legend. Of course, one has to consider the fact that Finland extraordinarily used outdated technology to fight more modern aggressors very, very efficiently. So, is it more down to the pilots? Well, that's something we'll just never know. What we do know though is even in the invasion of the Netherlands, it's reported that although it was slower than BF-109s and definitely less advanced, it was viewed as nimble in the skies and could even follow a Stuka through a dive. Yes, it was outdated, but still an absolute scrapper of the skies. Amazingly, a Fokker has also taken to the skies very recently, and this is something I didn't know about until doing this video. It's something I've been on my radar, but I just never saw it in any of my news feeds, and then, lo and behold, researching for this, I see that the Fokker D21 has taken to the skies again after 8 years and 17 days of work. This was made possible by Jack von Ergmund and Tom Wilkes, I hope I said your names right. Having spent all that time to rebuild the aircraft, it flew finally on the 23rd of May 2022. Absolutely beautiful. Well, it's time for the Fokker D21 in gaming, I guess. Okay, obviously the aircraft is really popular in Dutch simming circles, but it's been popular enough globally to see its upkeep in, you know, more modern simulators and fighting games. So let's have a look at some of them, starting with the usual Combat Flight Simulator and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Starting with Combat Flight Simulator 3, the aircraft is free to download, much like the abandoned wear, I guess, that Combat Flight Simulator 3 is. Something I've advocated several times is that this is an old piece of software, but despite that, it still looks kind of great and you can get a lot of upgrades for it for free that really help bring this platform into 2022, or at least maybe 2012. <laughs> Obviously this aircraft is not going to be the strongest in the game by any country mile, however, it's still an absolute joy to fly, and considering, again, it is free, and I can't stress that enough, it's free, then what are you waiting for? Also, if you have an older laptop and can't run perhaps more intensive games, this will probably run for you, even on a really cheap modern laptop. Remember when I said this aircraft was popular? Yep, it's seen its Flight Simulator X model converted to Flight Simulator 2020, the most modern iteration of Microsoft's fantastic Flight Simulator series, my own personal favourite Flight Simulator series. Now, I have actually flown this, and I really enjoyed doing so, but that was more around the time the aircraft came out, which is quite some time ago at this point, and that footage is long gone. <laughs> That's how long ago I intended to do this video. So I'm going to use some footage from some lovely flight simulator YouTubers I found. We're going to be looking at Vine, Moon, Men and Brett Plays, and you can see on the screen whose footage we're looking at. As I say, this aircraft is a conversion from Microsoft Flight Simulator X or Flight Simulator X, but honestly it looks stunning. Microsoft Flight Simulator's engine is just fantastic, even for older aircraft, and it's such a joy to fly. I mean, most things do look great in this, and it features liveries with the surviving roundels that well, modern Netherlands Air Force sort of use, and also the orange inverted triangles. It's also a free module, so <laughs> just grab it in the link in the description below. 
Now finally on this list we have War Thunder and I'm gonna stress, although War Thunder is free, this is not a free playing. You do have to buy this, but it is one of the cheapest you can buy in the game, so it's not too bad. I I want to say it's about tenner. The aircraft features in Sweden's tree as the Finnish version, but there is a skin in the game already for the Netherlands, but you have to buy it on the marketplace, which is a whole other kettle of fish that we won't go into today. No. Free user skins are available though. They'll only be seen by you, but I mean really, who cares? And they look amazing. It's just absolutely amazing to fly this in a modern combat flight like, simulator game. I really love flying this aircraft, and at its tier, it's really, really good. Just be aware though, your undercarriage can easily get shot off, as I've definitely demonstrated on my teammates before, under the premise that I think it looks better. <laughs> as usual, this is not an exhaustive list, and there are other places you can fly the Fokker D21, but these are probably the main ones that I'd recommend to you at the moment. If you've seen something that I haven't seen that you think everyone needs to know about, let us know in the comments below. Right, it's the history of the model kit, and this one is short but sweet. The kit I'm making today is by Frog, and it reared its head in 1963. Wow, it's not very long after World War II when you think about it in the grand scheme of things. Now, I think the most iconic artwork that this uh, kit ever had would come with the most famous markings of it too, with the orange triangles, and that was in 1972, originally in a bag style product, but then would come as a box in 1973. Like many X-Frog kits. Novo has also produced this kit, <laughs> but you know, other manufacturers also have. It's just what happens with frog molds. <laughs> the most recent I could find in this lineage was by Sieger Model, uh, which features German, Danish, Dutch, and Finnish markings, so quite the selection. Now the similarities between Frog's kit and Pioneer's are kind of hard to ignore. One of my friends bought the PM Models version, which is still in production today, comes in a Finnish variant and a Dutch variant, with two different sets of markings, both in the around or and in the orange triangle, and the Finnish variant comes with skis, which I believe Pioneer's did as well. But they are very, very, very similar to the point where I thought they were the same mould, but apparently they're not. I don't know how they ended up so similar, but it's probably because they're both quite simple kits, to be perfectly honest with you, and there's not really a lot you can do with it. But I mean, hey, it's nice that there's just a version of this kit floating around today, if I'm really honest. There are some other manufacturers who've made this aircraft as a model, such as MPM, who've done it in many variants, including Finnish with skis and the Danish variant. But having not built this brand, I don't really feel like I can comment on it and whether or not it's great compared to the frog version, but I imagine it's much more modern and up to date. Or at least I hope so. Now the version that I've got is from the Fighter Collection by Frog, and it features a Hurricane and a uh, MC202 as well. Now the box that came in was a bit tattered, but the model seemed absolutely fine, and I wasn't going to use the original decals anyway, so that's not really a concern to me, because I was using print scales, because I wanted to do it in the orange triangle decals. Well, I guess that's it. Should we have a look inside the box? And also, once we've had a look inside the box, we'll go straight into construction. So, let's do this. And by the way, this is quite a quick one. It's a very simple kit. <laughs> Famous Fighters Series 1, featuring the Fokker DXXI, which is our focus for today's video. So the box is a bit beat up, but it's all okay. This is sort of a frog reboxing by AT and all of the models just come in these bags and the decals all on one sheet. I'm using print scales decals and we'll have a quick look at the instructions for the kit as well, though to say they're rudimentary is putting it mildly. <laughs> Entering the bag we can see all the parts and the few sprues it comes with and then the main fuselage sections. Now the fuselage is not super detailed but considering the age of this kit I think it holds up quite well. Again, it's very, very basic. Not going to take you a long time to put this kit together at all, but you know, I think it looks okay, and free service details look okay on this model. The wings also come as two pieces each and the aileron separately, and just slot in. Really easy to get a dry fit and to see the size of this model. You won't see me painting this, but I do include the pilot in my final results, so this is what it looks like beforehand. And the canopy uh, sort of glazing or glass, whatever you call it. This is definitely a product of its time, much like the rest of the kit. And yeah, it's not held up particularly well because it's been floating around in that bag for God knows how long. So you can see the final sort of shot of all the parts here. It's quite easy. 
Now we're starting with the wings, we're just going to glue those together. We're just going to get glue all around the outsides of it, make sure we've got enough so that it all bonds across all of the seams again. Really basic, really easy. I'm sort of dry fitting the aileron bits and I couldn't work out whether these are meant to be loose so that they can move, which is quite common in older kits, to have sort of a functional aspect as a toy or whether they had to be glued in. I think due to sort of degradation over time, mine no longer held in, so I did glue mine. The wheels are quite easy to assemble. It's just two parts for sort of the, is it an cell you call it? The undercarriage? Anyway, and then the wheel can go in and sort of rotate freely, which is really cool. Really, really easy to put together, really quick. Once you've put both of those, you can glue them into the wings and they're sort of indents for you to sort of pop them in. Doesn't take a lot of work, just my nails got into in the way a little bit, which you know, <laughs> standard for me. And there we go. Doing it on both sides now, we're ready to put it into the fuselage house. Now, I've not glued the fuselage together itself, I'm just getting ready to do that by putting the wings in place first because this is one of those models that doesn't really matter which order you do it really. Once that's done, I've put this seat inside. The pilot isn't in yet, he'll go in right at the end and I'm, I'm pretty sure I just paint the inside of the canopy sort of a brownie black because it doesn't really matter too much what it looks like. You're not really going to see it. I put the two fuselage halves together. You can see the front is entirely flat because we've got to do the engine. Now the engine is really, really simple. The engine is just the cowling and you pop the engine inside it, put the propeller through the front side and then put, glue the stopper onto the back so you know it can freely rotate um i think mine does freely rotate still <laughs> um but sometimes it's you know it's quite easy to get glue on the inside by accident or sometimes you lose the little stuff a bit so you know it's just something to bear in mind also i put the tail section on and we're putting in the little wheel for the back as well um i think in some variants maybe with the skis it's more of like a, a tiny ski or a skid but yeah that's ours ready now we're going to paint the model itself and I'm doing this as the sped up version. You can see my full opinions on extra acrylic paint in the ultimate paint video that I did. But for now I'll just talk you through what I'm doing. I'm blocking off the green sections because the green is one of the most dominant colours on the aircraft. There's three colours overall that are over the majority of the aircraft. A green, a sand and a brown. Once I've done the green I will block it off with the sand colour and the dark earth brown will be the final shade. All three of them, I've just sort of approximated the colour using references to extra colours online and sort of the pictures of the aircraft itself. I won't lie, once I'd done the green and started doing the sand, I was a bit nervous. I didn't really know if this would really look nice, but rest assured, once the dark earth brown went on, I was really confident with how this aircraft would look in the end. It's one of those things where you just sort of have to trust the process to be perfectly honest because otherwise you might just doubt yourself. All of the paints pretty much required a two coat approach which is pretty normal with acrylics but I must say outlining with them was kind of nice even if I was a bit nervous on the first layer. Now the bottom of the aircraft is entirely the darker brown as well and that's pretty much the final stage of the painting complete at that point. Obviously the wheels and propeller sections I'll do separately, including a white ring around the cowling. Now we're on to the decals, my favorite part of this project. The decals look absolutely stunning. They are vibrant, and the only thing I think may be slightly different is, I think, on the Dutch East Indies um, sort of army aviation group, insignia which is the inverted orange triangle I've referenced this the whole time you can tell why I call it the inverted orange triangle instead it's much quicker but I think the black outline is thicker at least on the most common reproduction I've seen playing so I'm not entirely sure but I will say to its credit print scales decals are really high quality I did not look after them <laughs> during my usage and they held up really really well i found them really easy to use really easy to manipulate and move didn't suffer any particular tearing or failure of the decals honestly fantastic product really really impressed and i will 100 percent be buying them again once all of the triangles are on and all the little insignias the aircraft looks stunning a nice quick project okay so you've seen me produce the kit now let's have a look at the garment shots then I really hope you like it.
Well, I'm really pleased with it. I think I could have done a better job on the paintwork, if I'm really honest. It's not my best, but it is very vibrant and I love seeing it. So next to my bed I've got like a display case that I got from Ikea with all my models in, or at least most of my models in, and it always catches my eye. It's just so different and distinct and lovely. I just, I love looking at it. So, you know, it might not be my best model, it might, but it's definitely not my best looking model. But I'm, I'm overall really proud of it, and I think it looks fantastic. But let's go into buy or fly. So we know that I like my kit that I produced for me, which is, you know, the only reason you should ever be making a model kit is for you, I guess, unless it's a commission. But let's have a look and see if this kit is worth your cash. Now, the kit is pretty cheap, and I see them going on eBay for between five to 10 pounds, I say, for the frog version in better condition up to maybe 20 if it's in like you know almost pristine c condition for collectors and the PM model kits I'd say you'd get between anywhere six to nine pounds although not an identical kit it's as I say quite similar and probably easier to get this isn't a complete review of that but I'm just bearing it in mind in my consideration with that in mind though I'd still say this is quite an easy buy it's a really simple kit and it's great for people who are new to model aviation and I guess for people who aren't super confident and just want a quick build the camouflage markings are easy and because it features for so many different countries you're definitely going to find something that you want to build and you can always do what ifs anyway yes the kit is really outdated and it does show but again this is a cheap kit and there are some kits that are older than this that cost more or some that cost about the same I'm looking at you the old FX now we know you're not good <laughs> And hey, if you think this kit is too simple, then view it as a challenge, babe. Build the cockpit, you know, build it from scratch, or add on more detail, or rescribe it, do whatever you want to do to make it a challenge yourself. But as it's such a cheap model and it's so easy to build, you'll be hard to screw up on it. I loved my time building it. The model just fell together and it was a nice change considering the amount of models I built for my ultimate paint video was like nine and most of them were more modern and advanced kits so they took a lot longer to go together whereas this one literally just falls together, you're done. So really really lovely in that regards. I think that's everything from me then guys. Thank you so much for being here and watching. I hope you've had a lovely time. If you have enjoyed what you've seen here make sure to like the video and drop me a comment below. What's your favourite World War II fighter? Or what are you building today? Make sure you like the video to help me out and also subscribe for future videos. I tend to do at least one video a week. If you want to support the channel you can do so over on Kofi where you can do monthly or one-off donations. It just helps me afford new models or paints or you know an airbrush compressor which is my current goal. So you know whatever you can afford if you can but you know the most important thing is looking after yourself. But yeah that's everything. Thank you so much guys. Bye! Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and notification bell to be notified of every new video on Mondays. You'll also be able to see me stream live on YouTube. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. Have fun modeling.